Royalty. Welcome back to Nicolette's Comic Corner Classic, Classic Known Classics. This is episode number 1937 uh, and double show number 1831. Like I said, two Catwoman style trades. First up is a trade from Catwoman. Catwoman Volume 5, Fear State. This trade is also the finale for two things for this trade series. Uh, number one, it's also it's the final issues to collect uh, final trade collect issues from Ram V's run for the book because he ended after issue uh, 38. I think he was issue 20, I think it was. Yeah, he was not in this book very long. Not sure why he wasn't in the book very long. It's like he was in the book maybe two years and then he just leaves. Not sure why because Tina Howard takes over afterwards. Uh, the other uh, final thing about this book, it's the final one called with the thing of this is this is volume six uh because with the very next trade we have tina howard taking over the book and typical dc fashion whenever new Earth takes over new the issues of the main series they will launch the graphic now numbering also this also will be the last trade to feature the logo yeah this logo because if you see the cover for the first of the click issues from tina howard's run they actually changed the logo after ram v left because this logo has been around since 2011. Yeah, since the new 52 run for the book. Where it was done by... Uh, it was done by Joe Winnick and the Senti, Margaret Bennett, and... I'm trying to think. Uh, Giovanni Valentine and Frank Terry. About five writers over the core 52 issues. This volume has gone through about four so far. You have Julie Jones, Ram V, and then we also have Phil and Writer here. And now we have Tina Howard taking over the book again. Yeah, and our woman. Now, this book just collects issues from Catwoman Volume 5. Yes, this is Volume 5, issues 34 to 38. Which, isn't this interesting, though, that Ram V's final issue is the third issue of a volume? Which is also, believe it or not, the final issue that Ed Brubaker did for Catwoman Volume 3. Yeah, just by sheer coincidence. Yes, as the first hate stuff, it's not in here very much at all. Now, the artwork here is done by Nicola Vida with Fernando Belicho, Casper Wajaro, Laura Bagari, and, and Gerard Bernos. Uh, the cover is by Yannick Prinick and Nathan Fibian, uh, Farben. Now, the first issue has nothing to do with uh, Fear Stage. It's basically Batman reunited with Catwoman. And, of course, her... It's basically kind of the best way to describe Ish 34 is just Batman catching up with the Ram V, with the Ram v run for the book. With her taking on Father Valley, who does play a small role in Fear State. Yes. Now, then we come to Fear State issues, which... Those could be quite interesting because you get sort of drawn into Fear State because... Of, now, I should point out that when I saw this trade on Amazon, this is the cover on the cover, and they put this one on the cover for the action for the trade. I'm um, not really sure what I switched the covers for because this is kind of weird because this cover here on the cover is actually the trade of the cover trade cover is actually issue 34 and the one on Amazon had this one here Now mostly put basically you just have You have Catwoman meet injury end up in her apartment who is basically Occupied by her by a lieutenant who's basically coming after her then we see some of our supporting cast that get drunk, who basically get taken away, who basically get evacuated while Fear State's going on because of the magistrates. And then we have guest appearances here by these following bat these villains, uh, one of whom is not a Batman villain. We have Clayface, Killer Croc, Knockout, Firefly, and Cheshire. Now, of these people who are on this page here, two of whom are not Batman villains, and those are being Knockout and Cheshire. Cheshire is the page of Teeny Titans. Knockout made a first appearance in the pages of Superboy. And the one thing Ram V probably forgot, though, is that she's married the Scandal Savage. Yep, something Gail Simone basically still make canon in the current continuity. Yeah, Clayface plays a small role in these issues. As a matter of fact, he plays a role in the finale for this run. Yes, he seriously does. And you just have Clayface taking the force of the... You have these... You have these five, you have five people along with Killer Croc take the force of the Magistrate. Count getting involved here. And of course, this also leads to stuff that also happened pages of Harley Quinn. We have 
Harley, who's with the gardener, reunite with, of all people, Poison Ivy. We also have someone, uh, you know, one was called Cheshire Cat, not Cheshire, uh, Cheshire Cat. Who just a woman who's a friend of Catwoman's in this run. Mm -hmm. And then the, basically her working with the crew of villains to stop the magistrate. And getting Ivy. And of course also with the Riddler. Yes, the Riddler is in here. Uh, he does do very much of these issues, but it's great to see the Riddler. We face up against somebody who's from the magistrate. This woman in cloak. Who this is, uh, don't really know exactly. But the best part of these issues, of course, guest appearance here with the Penguin. Great, always great to see the Penguin, my sacred favorite Batman villain. But the best thing about these issues is that we see something, even, even the writer of Harley Quinn, the current writer, even she was so happy to finally, finally see this. Fans have been clamoring for this as the Batman animated series. This right here, Harley and Ivy kissing. Yes. Confirming the fact that, that right now they're a lesbian couple. Now, the thing is, I personally do not have a problem with this at all. Because it's been implied for years that she's been bi. And for me personally, I have no problem with this. It's fine. Like other characters who establish this straight for years, all of a sudden we have a complete out of nowhere outing of being bi or gay. This is fine. This is also something the fans have wanted to see for a long time. Excuse me. And probably also Paul Dini himself. Probably. Probably is happy with this too. I don't know. But I know Stephanie Phillips was very happy with this. Yeah, I told her basically about this. Like, were you happy to see that Harley and Ivy are a couple now? And she says, oh yes. She's very happy with that. Yes. Now, of course, she would say that because she's the writer of Harley Quinn. But I should point out, though, that this issue here when this happened, I think it was issue 37, I believe it was. Let's see. Uh, let me think here. Because basically a prelude to the storm was 34. This issue here, I believe it was. Uh, don't think it was the final issue of this volume. No, I don't think it was. Because there's one more issue coming this one. This is, uh, let's see. With a list on here, what this one is. Um... This is uh, part two. So, yeah, this is issue 37, which I believe this, if I remember correctly, when this got released last year, this was just a week prior, at least a week prior or around the same week of time when the Harley Quinn issue, which also had the same scene in it, uh, happened. But I saw it here first in the pages of Catwoman. I was so happy seeing this. Uh, I didn't tweet about it per se. I just was very happy to see this. I think it was great. And then we have... The Ghostmaker show up. Yes, the Ghostmaker. Now, those of you who have not been following Batman are wondering, who the heck is the Ghostmaker? He's a character from James Tanner's Batman run. Yes, this guy is basically Batman, except this guy can this, this guy kills people. Yes. That's the best way to describe him. He's basically a Batman who kills. And then we have some flashback stuff to... We also have a straight name after John Paul Lennon, which I think that maybe a singer, of course, is in Alley Town. And basically, 30. Uh, actually, I think it may have been 36. 36 that I have it. Yeah, 37 ends basically with, well, with this. Basically, like, all happy, happy people were very happy that this thing is over. He seemed like, reading the, re, when you read issue 30, you think, like, oh. Could that be the final issue of the run or at least the series? Nope. With one more issue. 38 is the finale where, where it's called An Unusual Suspect. By the way, it's really the end of the issue. This lawyer here is this lawyer here is actually Clayface. Yep. See, Catwoman decided to voluntarily turn us over the custody. Her lawyer says basically the cops are necessary because she volunteered to come in here. Yeah, so takes the handcuffs. And, of course, we have one last appearance here by Father Valley, which talk about being at a funeral. They talk about surveillance coming from the magistrate, where she's like, oh, that, 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 like, like, they, they think this was done by Cheshire Cat. Catwoman points out, though, nope, that was, that was Edward Nigma. He's like, Nigma, the Riddler. Yes, she points out, though, that was the Riddler's doing, not Cheshire Cat. 
That was the Riddler's day, which, yeah, given the fact how Riddler tends to be more technological nowadays than he was back in the 60s, I'm not surprised about that. That's actually perfectly fine revelation. Like, your family, like, fine prank is you. Found these all over town. We got civilian strays, pull these up, pick it back to the network. You know, it's a crime to interfere with government communications in time of emergency. Edward Nigma sure is a lot of trouble then. Nigma? The Riddler. He's the one who set up that network. Network up. He's the one who listened to the magistrate. If you ask me, I think I think it's of no good. The Penguin Nigma have been had some crooked designs on Alley Town. And of course you have in custody. And of course you have Riddler doing this doing this little typical thing. Hey, riddle me this, Oswald. What's green has four legs and shut the hell up, Edward. <laughs> yep. Where where does Nigma is working for you though? You know criminals. You say that. Oh, you know, Detective Riggs. Everyone there is some no good thieving criminal. And of course you see her crew from Fear State make a quick cameo. You have Cheshire Cat mean Cheshire for the first time. Hello, sh shoes. Is that what they call you? Yeah, who are you? I'm Shish. I'm Jay. Jay Negan. And they shake. Yeah. And of course, thanks to Clayface, she's able to get out of jail. No problem. She has a Batman. And she basically runs off, and that's the end of the run. Yeah. This book is fantastic. I love it. Uh, Ran V did a great job with this run. And right now, on what, the trade itself, I give a 9.5. I think it's excellent. My final thoughts on this run. A run that's, like I said, not very long per se. And, excuse me, when I've spoken to Ran V himself about uh, particularly this book, I think when, when I met him, I think he had just wrapped up his run for Catwoman at that point in time. I think so. Yes. I did tell him that I, I was really enjoying. Uh, I enjoyed his uh, Swamp Thing run. He appreciated that. Uh, I did tell him this, that prior to coming this book, just like I honestly never heard it before. And he wasn't upset by that at all. He perfectly understood because I think those comics were actually his comic book debut. And... I didn't know Ram V was a guy or a woman. I had no idea. And then some point out, though, Ram V is a guy. Okay, fine. Now, what did I think of his Catwoman stuff? I thought it was actually pretty good. It definitely felt like there was a continuation of what Julie Jones established when she when she uh, left the book after, like I think it was like 18 inches, I think it was. She wasn't book very long. I appreciate that she, he did that because sometimes, basically, especially in Green Arrow, whenever a new rat comes along, they just ignore everything happened before, keep characters, a little bit of stuff can, just do their own thing. That was that was the biggest problem with Green Arrow for for like the past nine years, for from 2011 to 2019. That is was for a lot of people the biggest problem with the book: the inconsistency with with the runs. This one in particular didn't have that issue at all. No. The one thing that you got pretty sure in the Senti's run was that despite the fact it was for a lot of people not very popular people, it definitely felt like a continuation of Jeff Wittick's run. Yes, it did. Did J.V.I. Valentine's run feel that way? Uh, not necessarily per se, but it was falling from the event that my internal. And Frank Thierry would just basically just try to reestablish as quo for, for the character to be basically, uh, uh, basically a cat thief. And this book... I gotta admit, basically, that Ram V did an absolute great job creating an original like Final Valley. I initially thought, but looking at him, I thought he was a combination of your Jack Knight or maybe some other character. I thought he was based upon Jack Knight, but according to Ram V himself, Father Valley is based upon a preacher with guns from the movie Hot Fuzz. That is according to Ram V. That's what he told me about the character. And he did an absolute great job with the book. Now, I'm not sure why in the world that DC is relying on the graphic novel numbering. Now, the thing is, when Ran V took over, they still kept numbering no problem. But instead of basically keep it going, restart the numbering for graphic novels. Which I think it's more an issue with that. Now, Marvel and Drift has to do with individual issues, but... 
Not a lot of time with the individual trades, but we just call it simply Catwoman Volume 1. You're probably thinking, which Volume 1? Is it the one for this? When you click from this run, I think that it just gets people confused. That's the biggest issue with it. But, great run. Love it. Can't wait for Tina Howard to come out. Which, excuse me, that one does pick up the very next issue. I think of, I looked up online. It's a cover issue 39 to 44, which is going to be interesting. All right, next up is another Catwoman related book. We have Batman, the Cat and the Bat, collecting issues of Batman Confidential issues 17 and 21. Yep. Now, the thing about the story, it's the first time Batgirl met Catwoman. And a lot of time now, this might become the cover, like, oh, nice clear cover. Like, oh, they're fully clothed. Uh, the thing about this book is, is this. Look at this. Basically, uh, they fight a lot in the book to the point where they're basically, they're basically, I have Batgirl in costume for an entire night chasing Catwoman a lot of the time. And also her alpha being shredded. It was shredded to the one point her asthma was completely exposed. And you might be thinking, with her alpha being shredded like it is, like falling apart... Did it basically show off her chest? Did her pants fall down? No, it didn't. I think basically her basic her belt did it. Also, there is a very infamous scene in the story where cat where Batgirl goes to a nudist club and she has to take off all of her clothes, but she was allowed to keep a mask on, though she was able to allow a piece of cloth cover her naughty bits. And of course, also the guy telling her to do this mentioned she had a cute keister. So basically complimented her on her butt. Yes, that's seriously what the guy did. He checked out her rear end. Classy. Now, the book itself is written by somebody you wouldn't think of right a Batman book. Fabian de Siza. Yes, he's the one who wrote this. Which seems odd. But it's fine. You also have Ken McGuire who does gorgeous artwork. I love Ken McGuire's artwork. I've met a couple times. The guy is really good at his artwork. I mean, aside from the fact that it's the first ever meeting of Catwoman and Batgirl, there's nothing real noteworthy about these issues. Not necessarily, no. I mean, there is a brief encounter here with, of all people, the Joker. Yeah, the Joker really appears in here. They all speak called the Arkham Asylum, which I thought that was quite interesting. And, as you can see, for Catwoman's perspective, this is, well, I think when Batgirl showed up, I believe it was... If I remember correctly, I think Batman was in his third year when he she first showed up. And Robin was only about two years into his tenure as Robin when she showed up. So yeah, as for Selena Kyle, when it's it's one of our whenever people whenever artists in the picker it are like costume, do they go for the Jim Ballet costume? No, they go for the gray attire that first popped up in year one. Yes, the Batman Year One story. Uh it's not really sure it's a pretty fun story overall. But I decided to throw this in here because it's a Catwoman story. But it's told in pages of Batman Confidential. Now the strange thing is... Now look at the trade. Now take a look at the price of this trade. Because you probably would think DC would probably... Because it's a Batman series. You'd probably think, oh, $6.99 for this trade. $12.99 for this damn thing. $12.99. Basically $13 for this trade. Yes. My guess, DC probably didn't have faith in this trade. Maybe because of features background Catwoman. It's possible to say at least. But, yeah. This usually has many first, But not Batman. Nope, not Batman's respect. It's mostly just... And, of course, the, the storyline does end with Batgirl ending up in bed. And, like, not even five minutes later, her alarm goes off. Yeah. Spent all night in costume. Because she was so exhausted being chased, chasing Catwoman all the time. Yep, but that's going to be pretty much it for Stick Love You. Uh, next, it was more Common Writer, and then it's going to be Harriman Loud from Our World. Okay, next video. Bye.